Today I'm going to show you how to use Mixmo animations with Unreal Engine 5. It looks a little different than it did in older versions of Unreal Engine and the interface for using um, all of this in Mixamo on the Adobe website has actually changed a little bit so if you're looking at an older tutorial you, uh, you may be missing out on some details. So first thing, log in. I've got my uh, username and password saved in here so you should use your own. If you don't have an account, go ahead and create one. Okay, now you're going to need to upload a character. So you click on select character file and you can put your previously created 3D model, um, ideally FBX format, but OBJ is also acceptable. You, know, you click that link, it'll uh, give you your prompt, find it on your hard drive. I recommend a zip file with your OBJ or FBX as well as the textures in one zip. Go ahead and click on it if you've done it that way, and ideally, the Mixamo website should actually see the textures. Okay, yep, there it goes. Yep, it saw my textures. So this is the auto rigger. Um, sometimes the models come in a little garbled. Uh, you might need to rotate them if they did, but it looks fine for mine here. Uh, I created this with Adobe Fuse, but uh, if you make it the old fashioned way or use a uh, 3D modeling um, sculpting program like ZBrush or a VR1 like Medium, you may have different results. Uh, go ahead and hit next when you've got it oriented correctly. Now you got to put uh, some main uh, markers on the body to uh, indicate where the joints are. So that's the chin up there, we've got the wrists over here, uh, there's the elbows, knees, and groin. Now these don't have to be exactly, exactly precise, but you want to get them in the right general area, otherwise the bends are going to look weird when you're actually seeing the animations. So I've got those knees on, and be careful about cr the groin. Um, you don't want it to be at the very bottom, it's sort of a little up from the edge. Uh, when you've got that all set up, you can move to the next step, but keep a, an eye out for the, the LOD stuff, the level of detail. If you want, you can manually tell it to use less bones um, for performance reasons, or if you want to create your own individual LODs, you know, level of detail at a lower level than the, the main one, you can have that uh, in your project as well. Uh, we're just going to go with the, the standard for this one, though. Uh, symmetry you're always going to want to use unless you have some kind of monster or whatever. Anyway, next, and uh, click on the auto rigger, and that will probably take some time to run. A uh, minute or two is pretty typical. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with how fast your computer is. I think it's got to do with how much activity is going on on Mixamo's network or their, their own CPUs or whatever. Okay, it just finished, and yep, looks like it worked just fine. You can definitely see our character moving around here. The joints are where they should be. You have some options. You can enable skeleton view, and you can actually see the bones that it created, and those look good to me. You can also do things like uh, rotate it, you know, pan around it or whatever, make sure you're happy with it. Go ahead and hit next when you're done. It warns you that if you had a previous character, it's going to overwrite it, which is fine. Okay, 
So it starts out in a T-pose. Uh, if it doesn't for some reason start out in a T-pose, just go ahead and hit refresh in your, or reload in your web browser. But uh, you want to save that T-pose, so download. Leave the option there, T-pose. You do not want to use original pose, you want T-pose. For the format, FBX binaries, which you're always going to use unless this is a Unity project rather than, a, than an Unreal one. Uh, FBX binary. So go ahead and select that and hit the download button. So save that in a folder on your hard drive where you know where it's going to be. Okay, so that's your T-pose. Now you're going to want to do a couple of animations. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to get some real basic ones. We'll do a walk and a run. You see there's a bunch of options here for all kinds of fancy stuff. Uh, worry about that later. <laughs> just start with the basics. So if you go over for walk, you can see there's some weird ones. There's a walking. That one's a backing up. There's walking with an IV at the hospital or whatever. Just pick something straightforward and basic. Don't use a start walking, don't use an end walking, don't use a turning, just a walking. You're gonna to wanna to go in place here. Yes, it has the option to have the moving forward in space as part of the animation, but we don't want that for Unreal because we want the game engine to be the one controlling where the character moves around in space. So check in place for that. Um, there are some options in here you can play with. Um, Different animations have different options, but overdrive, character arm space, and trim are usually there. Uh, character arm space is the one I end up having to modify the most. You may have different uh, results depending on the sort of models you're making, but it's pretty easy for arms to clip through the body. Um, mirror is an option too, if you want to change it from you know, walking uh, with the left leg forward, the right leg forward, you do that. But let's look at the arm space here. So. Um, if you want to pause it, zoom in a little bit, you can see here there are places when we're very near to clipping the hand into the leg. And if you go and drag it over to make the character arm space less, you can see it on purpose clipping through. Yeah, there you go. So if you want to move it away from the body, move the character arm space out bigger. If you have a character with really big arms, like, I don't know, a huge wrestler or a monster or something like that, you may have to have quite a bit more arm space. You can also use it just to make different effects if you want to make them walk a different way. But uh, keep in mind the options are here for most animations. Uh, overdrive is also kind of interesting because you can kind of change the speed with which the animation is playing. So this kind of makes it look like he's walking really quickly. But I'd rather pick a normal gait. So go ahead and hit download. We got more options this time here. Um, the main ones uh, that are different are the frames per second and the skin. Uh, keyframe reduction is here, but I wouldn't touch that. So uh, you want to do this without skin, and the reason is the skin is going to be attached to your main animation. It's going to be the main skeleton, the T-pose. And this is just going to be the, the motion itself without uh, having the, the skin. So without skin, uh, you can adjust the frames per second if you know what you're doing. I would probably recommend just leaving it at 30 unless you have a compelling reason not to. Usually you can't really tell the difference and uh, it's wasteful if you're uh, picking 60 when you don't need it. Um, 24 I would not recommend using. It's supposed to be, that's the speed that film, uh, you know, like actual movie theater film runs at and little else. So um, keyframe reduction, I wouldn't, wouldn't use the keyframe reduction because it's uh, programmatically dropping frames and unless you know for sure that's going to do what you want I wouldn't use that if you want less frames do it the hard way yourself but with this mix of most stuff you're probably fine and just use FBX binary unless you're using unity rather than unreal okay so go ahead and save that in that same folder so we can find it later and uh, let's get a running animation So you may have noticed that some of these animations are uh, kind of a pink and some are blue and the pink ones are supposed to be feminine and the blue ones are masculine. Uh, there's no reason you can't use either on, on whatever model you're making. Um, so like if you use the, the feminine one here on our masculine model, it doesn't matter, it works just fine. 
again in place because you don't want the uh, animation to be pushing character forward in space adjust that character arm space and uh, you can also go and um, you know adjust the overdrive or trim if you want um, helps to change the angle if you're not sure if you're clipping through or not but you definitely don't want to clip through the body if you could possibly avoid it so if you change the overdrive here we'll uh, yeah now it looks like the running's a little more intense but uh, it is supposed to be a slow run so I think it's fine about like that you can trim frames off but it's easy to make the loop look bad if you don't know what you're doing so I would uh, not mess with that until you've got more experience so go ahead and hit download Again, uh, without skin, I recommend no keyframe reduction in 30 FPS and FBX binary. Okay, great. So we've got that saved here, and we can go over to Unreal Engine and uh, import everything. Now we're going to import our models from the uh, animations from Mixamo. So uh, first we've got our T-Pose. And most of the defaults are gonna be fine here, but you wanna be careful about the scale, the uniform scale. Uh, most of the time just one is what you want, but um, be careful about that. If you made it in another program, it could be completely wildly off scale, really huge or really small. Uh, everything else, though, default should be fine. Don't specify a skeleton for this first T-Pose one because this is the skeleton we're going to be using. So just go to the bottom, import all. Okay. Now you may see a message like the one below here. No smoothing group information was found in this FBX scene. This is basically just uh, telling us that uh, we don't have blend shapes in here, which is fine because we didn't expect them to be there in the first place. Uh, Mixamo is not about characters' faces being animated, it's about the entire body being animated. So um, yeah, you're probably not gonna be worrying about this with Mixamo animations, or if you are, it's gonna be something completely different. So um, just go ahead and clear, and get that out of here. Okay, uh, so we have our character broken down, we got the skeletal mesh, we got the animation, we got the physics asset, we've got the skeleton itself, and then we've got the textures and uh, the material that it generated. Um, I think you may find that the generated material, if you are, especially if you're using Fuse to create the model, may not come through the way you want. Yeah, yeah we can see already here, it's all screwed up. Um, so my advice is just go ahead and make your own material rather than using the uh, auto-generated one here. You can just uh, you know, drag the textures onto here. Go from the uh, RGB node to the base color, and you know the same thing with a normal, and you know do the the same for any other ones you have roughness or whatever. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it here with just the uh, the base color and the normal for right now, and if you wanna go whole hog later, you certainly can, but this will get the idea across. So I'm going to drag my new material. There it is, Joe Matt. I'm going to drag that onto the character and give it a second to compile the shaders. Rotate this guy. There, looking good. Okay, now let's bring in animation. So we have walking first, and um, it looks like it has detected our skeleton correctly, but 
make sure that it's picking the right one if you like me we're experimenting with several different versions uh, you can see here I've got a couple of them in here okay there we go okay yeah Joey underscore character okay so yeah that's that's right because it's Joey, Joey Cart one comes okay mm -hmm, that's fine uh, and we have our scaled at a normal size import all okay so now I'm gonna drag this one out there next to our main one and again it's uh, materials all screwed up so let's just put the new material on there looking good rotate it there we go you may be asking why is this animation not doing anything well it's because we're not playing it you just simulate right now there we go Ooh, we're walking cool do the same thing with the other one slow run it looks like it detected the skeleton properly uh, scale. Seems fine. Okay. Import all. Slow run. We'll just put that right there. Same deal with the broken material. And we'll just turn it around to look at us. And simulate again. There we go. Okay, the animations are working just fine. Now, you can absolutely create yourself a character that you can control with the keyboard or the mouse or gamepad or whatever. And uh, use the animations with it. And I would encourage you to look at the Stackabot uh, project from the, uh, the Epic Store because yeah, there's a really good uh, section in there about setting up your character with canned animations um, and obviously you would be replacing their animations and their model with the ones that, that you uploaded to Mixmo and did the rigging with and uh, that'll everything will work the same from that point on but just keep in mind um, you're going to want to make sure that you fix any broken materials if like me you used a uh, the uh, fuse uh, Adobe Fuse program to to make these uh, make the characters for rigging. Okay, that should do it.